What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Justin Rodriguez, your favorite lender here at Neighborhood Loans. And we're back with another episode of Cafecito Talks, the number one podcast on entrepreneurship. And we're super excited because I have a guest that we just met with at the cigar shop. And honestly, when I first got into the business, I did a transaction for him. And I don't think I ever told you this, but I did a transaction with him. And I was like, one of those people, I'm like, dude, this guy is like a multi-million trillionaire, dude. I'm like, I love the logo. I love the name. I love the way his style goes. So uh, I'm proud to present Noe Fragaso here. Uh, it's an honor to be here with you, bro. And, um, you know, when I first, like I said, when I first got into this business, I did one transaction where you're on the listing side yeah and i looked up your logo i looked up everything i'm like dude this guy is like the freaking a shark over there in the real estate world dude your your listings are everywhere (laughs) um so it's an honor but give us a little insight give us who is noe fragaso uh, Fra- Fragoso. Fragoso, Fragoso, my bad. Yes, my bad. yes, yes. <laughs> That's the first one. <laughs> no, yeah. no, no, it's fine, man. It's fine. It's a complicated name. It's a different one. So, Noe Fragoso, I'm, um, what can I say about myself? I, um, I've been in real estate since 2010, part-time initially I started, then went uh, full-time in 2012. Uh, initially, I started um, working as a truck driver when I got first got into the business, and then eventually I made the transition to to realtor. Um, so it's been a long journey and, and here we are. That's cool, yeah. bro. That's cool. And interesting enough, he got into the business in 2010, right after the crash. So yeah. how did you feel like your family and friends transitioning from one career path to the other, looking at you like, uh, are you sure you want to get into this career? Yeah, man. It, it, it was definitely a scary time for sure. Obviously we went through the recession of 08. And at that point, when I was looking to get into real estate, everybody was getting out of it, you know? So Definitely, I guess I was one of the few that was decided to like go in, but I saw an opportunity and I think it's something that's kind of happening right now. Everybody's kind of talking about what they should or shouldn't do. Should they buy? Should they sell? Should they get into real estate? And I feel like when people are getting out, that's when opportunities present themselves. And I feel like in at that point, that's what I saw. So I figured, let me let me go into that. Let me see what that's all about. And initially, I just it was just kind of like a side thing. I didn't I did not plan to do it full time whatsoever. It just kind of happened after that. Yeah, for sure. But so, well, who introduced you into the business? So initially, while I was truck driving, you get a million dollar ideas all the time because you're on the road and you got nothing else to do but think. Right. So I'm going down the expressway full speed and I'm just trying to think of different ways that I can make money. (laughs) That was me. Right. So initially i was just trying to figure out you know i had to drop out of college to get into um the workforce to help fam- the family make ends meet so ever since then i always knew even when i was a little kid i always wanted to be in business be in business for myself what that looked like i had no clue obviously right but even while truck driving i was just trying to think of different ideas that i could you know establish myself as a businessman do i open up my own trucking company do I open up a restaurant? Do I get into real estate? What do I do? Right. So I came across this crazy stat that was like, if you look at the list of Forbes millionaires and whatnot, I think it's like something crazy, like 90 percent of them are all somehow into real estate. Oh wow! So then I was like, well, let's look into that. Let me at least get into that. And then obviously growing up, I saw my parents buy and sell houses and I always felt like they didn't get the best service or they didn't get their due when it came down to it. Right. Or maybe they could have, somebody could have helped them out a little bit better. So I was like, you know what, let me get into that. Let me figure out what is it, what does buying and selling entail? Can I become an investor eventually? So let me get my license. So I know what it's all about. And that led me to doing a couple of transactions on the side and people referring me and referral after referral. I had to quit truck driving, <laughs> go in full, full time and it worked out. So at what point in time did you feel as if you were ready to kind of be on your own? Because I, I believe you you told me in the past that you had a mentor up front and he kind of helped guide you to the path that you're at right now. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So that was a big help. So one of the realtors that helped my parents out, good friend of my father's from the same hometown in Mexico that, mm-hmm. that we're in. Right. So I, I may not look Mexican, but yeah, <laughs> I'm a Mexican from Durango. So, nice. um, my mentor, my OG mentor, Jose Herrera, uh, I reached out to him when I first got my license and I was like, Hey, I just want to learn. Can I shadow you? Can I help you out on the weekend? You know, just mentorship. I'll work for free. And he basically was gracious enough to take me under his wing. And, and basically I just absorbed as much as I could at that time. Yeah. And I, I always tell people the 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 key to uh, 
success overall just with starting your own business entrepreneurship i think truly is having the right mentor right and that that will allow you to grow in avenues where you never even saw yourself growing because those people are going to help you avoid those landmines right the things that you're not able to see so at what point in time did you get the reassurance that you're like, all right, I'm done with this trucking industry. I'm going to put my full force efforts into it. And was your mentor like, hey, you got to get this trucking business outside if you really want to be successful in the business? Yeah, no, he was great. I mean, uh, I met your mentor as well. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, it's when you have those people in your life, uh, I think mentorship is so key. It's so key. I didn't know it at the time. I just wanted to get knowledge. And he was awesome enough to just provide me with that knowledge. But even moving forward, when I was completely independent, I've been looking for mentors to kind of guide me. Like you said, it, it helps you avoid the errors that others did. We're not reinventing the wheel. You know, right. we're we're doing something that's already been done. So not why not reach out to somebody? And you'll be surprised. A lot of those mentors are they're open books. They're 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 more than willing to give you their knowledge and information. And then obviously, if you could provide some sort of value to them, then why not? You know, so I felt like I needed to at least reach out to him and he was cheering me on the whole way through. And it got to the point where I just again, back to the initial point that I made, the opportunity presented itself where I was like, OK, I got to make a decision. Do I stay where I'm at, comfortable, getting paid every other week, W-2? Or do I make the move to go independent, independent broker? God knows when I get paid. And granted, in 2010, uh, my average sell price was anywhere between sixty to 100000 on a home, right? So the commissions were not, <laughs> right. not that great. Right. Uh, I don't even know how I survived, to be honest. You know, I had my own apartment at the time. I was looking to buy my own house. And God knows how I made it through. But I was able to kind of, you know, live within my means and, and and make that leap of faith where I just I just saw the upside. And I think in real estate, uh, for anybody that's looking to get into the business, there's just so much upside. The possibilities are are enormous. They're endless. So what you do with it is completely up to you. Like what you put into it, you will get out, you know, so nobody's going to do it for you. And that's what I learned from the, my mentor that you have to put in the work. And when you get out of it, it's directly correlated to the work that you put in. Right. And one thing I, I love about real estate and what you're saying is exactly what you said, right? There's no ceiling, right? You set the bar and the expectation. And I think the key for your success was that you surrendered to the process, right? Your mentor told you jump, you jumped. And you're like, how high, right? You always surrendered to the process and you understood in order to be successful, I had to do X, Y, and Z to get there. And you never questioned your mentor. And I feel like a lot of times when we're in this industry, it's a lot harder, especially when you're trying to teach an old dog new tricks it's like impossible you know uh, so for me i one thing i realized was i had a clean slate you had a clean slate and that has allowed us to grow you know and i think it's super important once you're getting into the industry for all the people that might be watching that are looking to get in any industry you know whether it's car sales real estate it's surrender to the process and surrender to those who already have experience and even if you have the experience it doesn't mean that you cannot adapt to the new ways that other people might be sharing to you. Cause I think the number one way of growth is actually kind of developing around to those people around, you, you know? So, uh, and when I first met you, bro, honestly, like I said, I think that one thing I loved about you is you were just a genuine person, right? It's just, you're just very straightforward and, and cool about, you know, sharing your, your process of it. And you would never expect you to be as successful as you are, because I feel like a lot of perception of people who are successful are very standoffish and arrogant. And that's when I first got into the business, I was very naive to that. Yeah. That was something where I first got into the business, I'm like, dude, these, these people who are top producers are just going to look down at me and not going to talk to me. So yeah. when I quickly realized just having a conversation with somebody outside of business, right? Even if you didn't give me a deal, it wasn't about that. It was just kind of feeding off the things that you're doing to progress. And I learned a lot from just meeting you and how you structured your own business and grew it to the point that where you're at. Um, so I found value in the conversations that we had. Yeah. So when you're meeting new individual agents and you're trying to compare it to your situation, how do you first evaluate that person and see how their path to success yeah, I mean, great question. I mean, when I first met you, same thing. I, I thought you were very transparent. You were genuine. I could see that, that you have that drive and determination and you're really young, you know, so yeah. I, I wish that I was like that at, at that age, you know, so so kudos to you on Thank that. You, Absolutely. So 
it, it's one of those things that when you meet new people, it, it's it, it, at least when I got into the business, yeah, you know, the real estate in general, both on the agent side and on the lending side, it, it is very competitive. And there's a lot of competition out there. There's, I mean, everybody wants to be a realtor nowadays, right? So like clients always tell me, well, I have a friend that's a realtor, so I'm going to go with them. I was like, yeah, well, I have a ton of friends that are realtors yeah. too, you know, come with me. You know, I'm the best option and it's, it can be very competitive. And as a result, there are some agents that, you know, come across very naive, very arrogant, and it is what it is. It's the nature of the business. But then you do meet a great amount that are not. And like you said, they're open, they're genuine, they're hardworking, and they just want to connect and network with other high level achieving people, you know? And mm -hmm. I feel like that's something that I've learned to appreciate from the industry that a lot of people at the end of the day, we just want to succeed. You know, we want to be better than we, what we were. We want to set ourselves up, set our families up. And when you meet other like-minded individuals, that's when you really connect. So when I'm looking to grow my team, grow my company or add partners to my business, first and foremost, do we have that same mindset? Are we both driven to perform at our highest level and help each other grow without there being a conflict of interest or egos or I'm better than you sort of thing? You know, right. and I feel like that's super, super important because that creates that trust and that bond and that partnership to move forward. And um, I consider myself very loyal. Right. So yeah. but at the same time, I'm not I don't want to just limit myself to not meeting other new people. So like you said, you know, you reached out, you were on the other side of a deal and it went so smooth. And I was like, oh, cool. You know, it, it, it's it, it's it's the the guy from TikTok, yeah. you know, <laughs> so it's like, oh, awesome. He, he actually does work and he he's a professional and he handles his, his job the right way. So when you reached out and approached me to go have cigars, it was more of a no brainer, like, OK, I've seen your your content. Awesome. And now I saw your your work ethic even better. So let, let's meet, you know, so. Right. And I, I feel like when I wanted to to meet you, it was for the simple fact that, number one, I saw that he opened his own broker. So shout out to you for opening your own brokerage. Thank That's you. absolutely Thank amazing. You. Uh, but when you opened your own brokerage, what was your main goal and insight for those who wanted to come in and join? Yeah. So the main idea be behind opening my own brokerage is it's providing more value in the industry. That's something that we, you just don't see too much of. Um, there's very few companies that that provide that sort of value. I think in in um, in our business in general, it's very much it's the requirements to get in are relatively low. Yeah. You, you go to a class which you never ever use after right. you pass it <laughs> yeah. it's it's like it's pointless they just take your money there the amount of money isn't much compared to any other profession that you're going into and then they entrust you to handle what in most cases is people's biggest assets biggest financial decision in their life and a lot of us don't do that good of a job we have no idea what we're doing so when we go into a brokerage it's very like there's your desk there's the phone go get them tiger you know it's very little training, very little mentorship, very little guidance in any sort of way. And even the ones that are guiding you, what have they done? What's their track record? What are their successes? Or are they just, you know, are they just talking because they couldn't go out and perform? So they yeah. rather just stay at the office and teach, you know? So that, I saw a lot of that in the industry. So through trial and error, I kind of learned the hard way what not to do, what to do. And I found some amazing mentors along the way. And the common theme was just continuing to develop, grow, educate, and, and, and improve as a, as a salesperson. And at the same time, provide great quality service to people that are looking to buy, sell, or invest. But add that education factor. And I figured, you know what? Let me do that for others. Well, what I learned from those mentors throughout my years, let me do that for other people that are looking to get into the industry. And that's when we opened up NF Properties. Based out of here of Oak Brook, we moved to Oak Brook because it's centrally located where we could cover the city or the suburbs just as easy. And um, now we're looking to get aggressive and scale and surround ourselves with the with the right people, the right team. Right now we're small, but we're looking to expand. Right. And, you know, one thing I love about the brokerage that you're starting and the things that you're adapting and putting forth for your agents is the education piece. Right. And one thing you talked about when we were, you know, just chopping it up at the at the cigar lounge was exactly that education piece about sales, because there's a, a psychological portion about sales that not a lot of people understand. And I don't think 
when you're buying a house, it's necessarily you have to sell someone on the house, but that's where the psychological piece comes in. You have to understand each person and individual is different. So how yeah. do you share light to those new agents that join your brokerage on the things that you were taught and how do you educate them on that piece? Yeah, I mean, I, it, when I got into the industry, I always kind of revert to like, what, where was my state of mind when I first got into it? And I know exactly how they feel when they're getting into it. Because now, you know, you've been doing it for so long. It's kind of like second nature. But you're you're scared. You're you don't know. And and like you said, it's when it comes down to real estate, you're not selling the home itself. Yeah, that's what we deal with as far as the transaction part. But people are buying on emotions. You know, how does that house make them feel? What's important about that house? And those are the things that you as a salesperson at the end of the day, you need to start to see yourself as a salesperson like you yourself. You you do the financing part of it. Yeah, you could go over numbers all day long, but do they understand those numbers? So it's not even the information that you're giving them it's the emotion behind the information. So as a salesperson, you have to get really, really good at those skills of asking the right questions and listening to the answers and then asking more questions to really understand where they're coming from. And then at that point, that's when you can help people in the right decision that's best for them, not forcing them into a house, but just basically saying, this is how they feel. This is what they want. Let me help them achieve their goal by listening and, and listening to their emotions. So instead of letting them walk away and think, it's like, okay, what did you feel? Well, I'm going to talk to my husband. Okay, well, what do you feel so that way, or maybe we can have a three-way conference with your husband yeah, and everyone. Yeah, you, you know, you something know? so simple. And, and that's the thing, like, this is not something that comes easy yeah. by no means because it's not natural, <laughs> yeah. not yeah. natural. I mean, I like to, I don't like to consider myself an introvert by any means, but growing up, you know, I had, um, I, I was shy, you know, I was always the kid in the back of the class. In high school, I had really bad acne. Um, yeah. I sweat a lot, you know, you might, I might be sweating right now. I, I don't know if they can see it. Right. <laughs> yeah. But it's one of those things where it's like, as a teenager, I was very self-conscious about my, those things. Cause you know, it's, it's not cool. So then I would always limit myself and try not to be seen or heard, um, to the point where like even going to McDonald's and they didn't give me my barbecue sauce for my nuggets. I was scared to go up to the <laughs> counter and ask for that, you know, cause they were going to say no. Oh my God. <laughs> So here I am debating, do I go into real estate or do I not? Well, going into real estate, damn, I got to I gotta actually yeah. sell something. I got to talk to people. I got to sell them on a house. How the hell am I going to do that? You know, so I had to kind of train myself to snap out of that and learn how to communicate with people and get them to to buy something. And it came down to like when somebody says, let me think about it instead of being like, oh, OK, OK, think about it. Call me. And then nine out of 10 times, what happens? They, they don't call you back. So it's like, I let that happen several times. And finally, I'm like, man, what the hell? I go on appointment, on appointment. Yeah, like, they, they love me. They, they said, let me think about it. And I never get a call back. That's not paying the bills. What the hell do I do? Right. And then at that point, I was like, you know what? There's got to be a way. So then I learned through mentorships, through education, that you have to ask a follow up question, which is simply like, OK, you want to think about it. I completely understand. I like the way you think, but let's think about it together. What is specifically holding you back from making the decision right now? And then now they give you a more detailed answer that you could work with versus, oh, they're going to think about it. And then you assume 101 reasons that are not correct. Right. So, so do you go through and this is huge. Do you go through situations like this with your agents, like one on one or as a group at, to kind of go over each scenario so that way they can get understanding? Yeah, how to yeah, answer? yeah. So like well, what I learned is to do role play, which sounds kind of cheesy yeah, and no, corny and a lot of people <laughs> don't like it and can get my mundane of, at times. But that's how you improve your skills, you know. So what we do in my office is as a team, we get together Monday through Thursday for 30 minutes. We grab a script or a specific scenario and we role play the scenario all with the team. We have fun with it. We got to make it fun. Yeah. But it's that constant repetition that makes you better. And if you look at all the high level achieving individuals, the Michael Jordans, the Kobe's, the Tom Brady's, the that's what they do. You know, they just throw the ball over and over. They shoot that free throw a thousand times. And it, you think they're not bored? You think they don't want to go home? Of course. But that's. If you're going to be uh, in the real estate industry and you have the ability to earn millions, I mean, you could earn millions in this industry and you live a beautiful life. Why not treat yourself like a high producing professional like that? 
you know, so work at your craft versus just winging it like most people do. And yeah. then they complain about the market being up or down and then they never do anything about it because um, I think we talked earlier, you have to be recession proof, you know, whether the market's good or bad. If you have the skill set, you have that education piece going in your favor. It doesn't matter. You're going to do business regardless. And I think that's what I try to convey to the team. So I make it a, a mandatory, non-negotiable Monday through Thursday. Show up. Let's role play. And that's every day, you know, and I, I I find it interesting when when you're talking to newer agents and anybody in the industry, you for me. And this is how I relate to the people that my circle. Right. Because you like you said in the beginning, you want to surround yourself by high profile people that are willing and wanting to succeed. Right. And there's a difference between being comfortable with the money that you're making and wanting to be a great. If you want to be great, you go into the office nine to five every single day, treat it like a nine to five and even work outside of those hours and work the weekends and do the things that you want to do. And some people assume that since we're a self-employed job and we can choose our hours that you work less. In reality, you work more and you kind of dictate that, which is why people fail in this business. Right. If you treat it like a nine to five and you consistently going on the hustle and grind. And I feel like people like you and I are very similar in the sense where it's there's always more. You're always hungry. You always want the next big thing. And that's what what keeps driving it. No matter what you do, you could be as so many people. You should be proud of yourself. And I'm like, what do I got to be proud for? I'm not at the place where I want to be. And it's a continuous thing. And I, do I look at you? And I see that you opened your own brokerage. And I see that as like the biggest thing in the world. But I guarantee you're in your own your mind. You're like, I'm not even close to where I want to be. No, not you know? at all. Not at all. And I, that's, mean, I, was, I was walking through these headquarters here and I was like, damn, we're, we're doing it small. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, exactly, we, we, we got to go bigger. Like, exactly. Okay, okay, I see this. So it, it's it's an amazing. But that's the thing. Like, like when you meet individuals like this, like I feel like it's very natural. It just kind of flows like, or, you know, there's cameras in front of me. There's a microphone, but you get a little nervous and jittery, but then it just starts to flow. Same thing in business. You know, you want to surround yourself with those individuals that allow you to just flow in it. Yeah. So when you do work on your skills, when you do go out and, and uh, deal with uh, situations with clients that you could go back and bounce off these ideas and people are pushing you or pulling you with them. You know what I mean? It's yeah, not that yeah. that ego that we talked about where people are going to just be like, oh, I got the secret sauce. I'm not going to tell you anything. Yeah. It's like, you know what? You, you had great success. Awesome. I'm proud of you. Enjoy it. Recognize it. Be grateful for it. I'm big on the gratitude part, but don't settle. Right. Move. Be the Love best it. version of yourself. Go for that next victory. Go for that next win. What that win looks like is different for everybody. But I feel that day in and day out, you have to be a better person than what you were yesterday. And, and you can't you can't celebrate that last closing. You can't celebrate that last buyer orientation or that last listing appointment. You got to go on to the next. So a lot of the times, you know, it could be a double edged sword. So I'm Friends or family say you you work too much, you know, yeah, <laughs> so yeah, exactly. that could be another thing where you need to find what they call that work life balance. Personally, I don't believe that's, I don't believe that's the case. You <laughs> know, that's that's not the case. And that's obviously something that, I, you know, I'm, I'm married. I have two a beautiful wife that I love dearly and, and two beautiful daughters. And now I have to manage running a company, growing, expanding dealing with the agents, dealing with the clients, the files, and then going home and then obviously being there for my for my spouse and my my kids. And it, it's a challenge. But I feel like there's a way where you can incorporate everything into what is just life versus having to say when I'm on, I'm on when I'm off, I'm off. I'm only going to work nine to five where I'm getting into the real estate industry because I want work time freedom and I want to travel yeah, and make uh, money. Yeah. That's that's BS. Yeah. So, I mean, and that that's the the key to it. And I, one thing I, I want to point out for me, at least, is obviously for work-life balance. I, do, I have a weird and different perspective on work-life balance, right? I think you should try to have some sort of balance so you don't drive yourself crazy. Right. But at the same time, I don't I, I don't feel as if I could I will burn out. Right. I feel like you. I'm a consistent going getting because I'm not doing it with the mindset of like, oh, my God, I have so much work. Oh, my God, I have so much things to do. I have it in the mindset of like I'm buying myself time for the future. Right. So when I'm 30, 40, 50 years old, I'm not working because I have to work. I'm working because I want to work. Yeah. And then at a point in time, I could shut off and go to a trip to Guam or where, but where, wherever I want to go. And I still have my business, but do I have to tap into it? 
No, I right. choose to tap into it because I want to and I enjoy the business aspect, but it's a, not a necessity at that point anymore. Yeah. And so when I, I explain that to my loved ones, it's it's true because they don't understand the vision at some points of time. It's enough right? enough. Right. It's like, yeah. you know, Aren't and you happy just exactly. Why can't you just you're, you're in a good spot? Just <laughs> relax. You're good. But it's like, nah, like I know by the time that I'm this age, I want to be able to disconnect, but not really disconnect, have the ability to disconnect. I think there's a two different in between the that freedom to the freedom disconnect. to yeah. disconnect yeah. exactly I and mean, that's what it comes down to i mean funny story when i first uh my first closing um i took i was so anti-vacation because i was just in like work mode and i was truck driving just trying to like save up some money to make the move into real estate yeah and not have to depend on a commission check right away that uh when i finally got my first deal and it finally closed i was actually boarding a plane in hawaii it was the first vacation I've taken in years. I was like kicking and screaming the whole way there. And then I enjoyed myself while I was there. But when I got the call from the attorney that, oh, deal funded, you're closed. I have your check. I was like, damn, I'm in Hawaii and I got paid. This is nice. <laughs> I could do this for the rest of my life. Oh, hell yeah. This is a piece of cake. The next, I think I had like five deals that were pending and I had, I, I did the math. I was like, oh, I'm good for the next six months. All of them fell through <laughs> all of them oh, I, I, and i was like oh man i had just closed on a house so i had a mortgage coming i was like what the hell am i gonna do now yeah and i just went into like straight work mode 24 7 because you needed to have that 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 money coming in and like to your point is i immediately saw you can't not put in the work you do have to have some sort of balance when you don't drive yourself crazy but you want to I wanted to set myself up where, yes, right now I'm young and I'm single. I could do this as much as I want. But eventually I'm going to have a family and eventually I'm going to wa not want to have to do it. Like you right. said, I don't want to be 50, 60, 70 years old and I have to go close that deal. I want to do it because I love it. Yeah, you know? And exactly. then that's when you have that freedom that when you're able to go travel, enjoy your time with your family and still run the business and, and run it in an effective manner because you have the systems, the process and the people in place. That's that's when you see like oh, this is this is worth it. No, yeah, bro. But it's funny that you say that because honestly, one of my first tips that my mentor gave me when I first got into business was don't spend your check until it closes. Because I <laughs> was like, that's something that and I never really understood because I didn't know how a straight commission based job actually was until obviously you're in a point where you didn't close the deal. You're like, also, when am I getting paid? And you're like, oh, no, <laughs> yeah. oh, wait, I'm not and, getting paid. And I think that's something that a lot of people don't know about the industry. You yeah. Know? They, they see, what, what is it now? Selling Sunset. Sell, sell, yeah. Million dollar listing. Lambo trucks and, and all, all this stuff. Lamb, everybody's driving a Lambo <laughs> and a Ferrari, showing up to the listing appointments, and they're getting listings left and right. And then there's just office drama. Yeah. It's nothing like no, that. No, it's nothing not. Nothing like it really that. Isn't. I mean, we have to like chase people down just for a w2 then yeah. we have to then go on like uh, i don't know a handful 100 showings before they even like anything exactly when the market's hot it's too hot when the market's cold it's too cold and then we live in chicago so then what is it like only nice weather what three months of the three year three months of the year yeah <laughs> so, so <laughs> it's it's definitely a challenge so god knows when you get paid and then that's the that's the one thing that that's why when I was first in it, I was in, in part time and it was one of those things where I was like, let me keep my steady job. But then it got to the point where I started getting enough referral business where I was like, well, let me make a move. And I was that that's that's a scary thing. So for a lot of people that are thinking about getting into it, it it's one of those things that you have to kind of prep yourself. And I do tell people that come in and meet with me initially, like, hey, I want to be a realtor. And I just say, hey, you, you got to put in the work and you got to be able to like just know you're not going to get paid from like 30, 60, maybe 90 days from that's now. So if you have a little bit of a reserve or something you can do on the side to hold you down. But my best advice is go with a team that has all the systems in place. That way you hit the floor running. You get paid sooner rather than later. You learn the skills. You learn the knowledge. You learn the experience. And then you go off and you can do your own thing in the future. Right. So. And for the for the people, the individuals that want to get into it, the one thing you got to understand is you're only as good as your last month. Right. So just because you close five deals last month does not mean necessarily mean the next month you're going to close another five. So you have to repeat the business. So the one thing that I actually love about this business, which might drive people crazy, is once you're mid into a month, 
you're like, okay, next month, next month. Then you think of next, next month. And then you're like, I'm, I'm always on the go. I'm like, once I have a couple deals for the pipe for the, this month, now I'm like, okay, what do I got to start doing to generate more deals for the, the next two yeah. months in advance? So, um, you know, for young individuals, again, or people who are already in the industry, what advice would you give them to like kind of how to orchestrate your business to where you think months in advance? It, the thing that I picked up along the way is to track your numbers. Um, do you do something like that? Yeah. 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 So tracking your numbers is huge. And a lot of people are like, well, how, how do you track your numbers when you just told me not to count my money? You know, so it yeah. can be kind of like contradicting. But I never look at the amount of the money. I, I track different things like how many contracts did we get signed? How many appointments did you go on? How many of them are buyers? How many are sellers? Well, um, look at the money as far as what's the average commission that you might be getting. And based off that amount, what's what's the minimum you need to just survive and pay yeah. your bills? And then what's access? And then once you know those basic numbers, now you can set up a game plan and a plan of action and attack. So then again, with all my agents on the team, that's basically one of the things that we do. What are your goals? What do you want to do? Here's your numbers. I need you to get two contracts signed a month, five a month. Are you on track? One down, four to go. And when I when you start focusing your business on that sort of number, not how much I got paid, that's when you can really produce. And for me, that's initially how I started. I it, I did the math and I was like, I need two closings a month to pay my bills and survive. <laughs> yeah. If I get a third one, we might go watch a movie and have a dinner, you know? <laughs> and then at that point, I just started like two a month, two a month. And that was my battle cry. There was a big number two all over my office. Oh, two a month, two a month. I don't care where they came from. So if I was door knocking, open houses, sign calls, reaching out to family and friends on social media, wherever, two a month. And that was it. And then I hit two a month for like two, three, four, five, six months in a row. Bump it up to three, bump it up to four. And now we're now the numbers just get bigger, you know, right, but then you start to it's a game. You start to play with yourself, you know, and you have fun with it that way, because like you said, now you're like, all right, I'm halfway through the month. I hit my target on to the next month, you know, and you're only good as your last deal, like you said. Right, right. And one thing it's funny and ironic. I say that, but I recently started looking at numbers in that light. Okay. Uh, so prior to last year, which I I was, I'm a very big person where I put my head down and work but I'm not very systematized in terms of, of the way that you're looking at it. So when I was evaluating my business on what I wanted to do this next upcoming year, interesting enough, my cousin, who's not even in the business, was telling me, oh, have you looked at this? And he's like, by the book systems, like, oh, dude, he does everything by numbers and he has to be look at every single number, how to achieve your goals. So when he told me that, I'm like, I don't know, I want to hit 140 families. Well, how are you going to get there? By closing more deals. <laughs> like that's that's how it is. Do more you know? business. Yeah. Do more business. Work harder, you know? But he's like, okay, so now break it up by quarter. So okay. Then he's like, okay, you need to have 30 transactions each quarter. And I'm like, okay. So now I'm like, okay, that's feasible, right? Okay, now I can see how how I gotta do it. Then he's like, now break it up by months. How many do you have to have a month? Okay, you're short in the first month. How many have to have second month? And then he broke it down by weeks. Okay, this is how many pre-approvals you have that week. This is how many leads you have to have. And then I started looking at it and I'm like, Oh, damn, that's another way of looking at it. And I it makes your goals seem more achievable, right? And, you know, it it, it might not be something that's automatically like, okay, you're going to hit every single goal. But as long as you're shooting for the stars, and if you don't reach the stars, it's okay because you're higher than what you were before. Yeah, yeah. Right? You, you, make, you set your goals um, somewhere that's achievable, but still stretches you. Right. You know, you still want to stretch yourself because you don't want to set your goal as I'm going to do one deal a month. For some of us, that's that's a lot. You know, most I think the average realtor closes three deals a year. So yeah. one a month is huge, you know, and I think if you set something that's attainable and achievable, you achievable based on your targets, then, yeah. And I think what you you just did there, you started seeing yourself as a business, yeah. you know. So, yeah. again. I keep going back. You're really young man, <laughs> and you're doing this at a really young age. And that's kudos to you on that, because when you see yourself as a business, you start thinking of your, as yourself as that business. Now you start looking at numbers and deals and transactions like that monthly, quarterly, uh, yearly, uh, weekly, daily. Now you you get up in the day, you know exactly what you need to do. I need to make so many calls. I need to make so many appointments. I need to make so many contacts today, you know? Right. And you, now you have a plan of action when if you you achieve the goal, you have then the decision to then say, goals achieved, do I go for more to be ahead of the 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 trend? 
or do I now have the ability to go and have a little free time here on my own, right? So it just depends on what you're trying to do. But when you look at that, it's it's kind of like what all the major companies do. You know, they report their numbers quarterly and whatnot, and the stock market goes up and down. So why why are you any different? So right. treat it that way. And it makes you that much of a better professional as well. Mm-hmm. So that's right. great job on that. So. Thank you, bro. Thank you. I, I always tell people, and one thing I love about this platform overall, right? I'm not better than anybody else, okay? Anybody can achieve the things that I could do and what you are doing, right? The thing is, not a lot of people want to put in the work and effort to think the ways that we are looking at it. And that's the the issue that I want to shed light on everybody, right? Just take the jump, take the risk, take the leap, and you're going to reap the benef- benefits in the long run if you just take the time to do it and actually take the risk. There's no guarantee you're going to be a great realtor after you became no. a truck driver. But guess what? You took the risk and now you're reaping the rewards and now you have your own brokerage. So kudos to you and shine light on that. You know, so. But outside of everything, right, one thing that you said today that I find very, very interesting that I feel like a lot of people can relate to is that you are an introvert, that people like you didn't even like talking to people. You got into a business where all you have to do is talk to people, call people, mingle with people and socialize. So how would you give advice to those who are getting into the business that are introverts? They're like, I don't think I could be a realtor just because I'm introvert, but obviously you put in the right steps to become as successful as you are. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a challenge for sure. Um, one of the quotes that I picked up along the way from a mentor is, be great at something you hate. And I hated talking to people. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I was like, you know what? Let me let me shift my mindset on that, you know, and and through work, it's, it's something that you have to work on sh- shifting your mindset, addressing that fear. Why do why did I, quote unquote, hate talking to people? What was it about it that I hated? You have to, like, confront yourself. And sometimes, you know, you're dealing with demons that you're like, oh, I don't want to look at that. Yeah. And, and I had to take a hard look in the mirror and say, OK, I'm only holding myself back. And at the end of the day, I didn't want to die with any regrets as if I could have done something better with myself or for myself or for my family because I didn't I didn't step out of my comfort zone. And something like that was just like, you know what? Being scared to ask for that barbecue sauce is not going to get me anywhere. <laughs> you know, so I need to step out of that comfort I'm gonna zone. I'm going to eat my chicken nuggets with barbecue sauce. I'm going to eat my chicken nuggets with barbecue sauce because that's what I want. You right. know, and you, and like um, my wife actually gave me this recently. Take your space. You know, you have to take your space. This is what you want. You are no better than anybody else, but nobody else is any better than you. Go and take it. Go and take it. Go ask for it at, at least. And at least you don't have the regret as if you didn't try, you know? So I decided to kind of put that into the business part of it. And let me let me get myself out of my com- comfort zone, be great at something that I hate, which was putting myself in front of people and talk and mingle and help them through something that I'm that I like to do, which is helping them build some sort of financial success through real estate. And that became successful. It increased my confidence. So you, when you have those little victories of some, something that initially just started off with making phone conversations, then going on appointments and actually having a good appointment, then yeah. going on presentations. And then it was like, OK, let me do bigger presentations. And now, OK, let me let me make more phone calls. Let me actually put myself out there on social media. Let me go with Justin and film a podcast, (laughs) you know, those are little things that you just start having little victories that build confidence that eventually all of a sudden is, okay, yeah, this guy is a great salesperson. He gets out in front of him. He he's okay with talking with people and they have no idea that, you know, I get scared to ask for barbecue. So (laughs) so it's just not the way it is. I'm at McDonald's every time I'm getting everything (laughs) I need. (laughs) So, yeah. So it's one of those things you just have to kind of work your way up to it and then just, um, face those fears head on and and be great at something you hate. And and it's interesting to me. Do you feel like all insecurities can be defeated through time? I believe so. I believe so. It's a challenge. But if you work within yourself, I'm big on personal development. So one of my coaches, um, mentors, and I'm even a coach for his uh, or a guide for his program, Danny Morrell, he he helped me address a lot of those insecurities uh, by just taking a look within and then just kind of being okay with who you are and what what makes you you? Nobody is going to be you. Nobody's going to be me. Uh, a lot of people want to get into the industry, but you know, you might inspire them to do a version of you with them, but you don't have to be like that person, you know, like, like, but there's something in them, in you that inspires them. And I think we all have that, you know, when you see Michael Jordan do that slam dunk, you're like, wow, that's amazing. You know, when they see you do your videos, oh, that's so cool. There's something in them telling them you could do that. 
So yeah. as long as people see that, get that inspiration, and then actually have the courage enough to go out and do it, I think that's all you need to do. I 100% agree. And, and a lot of people don't really know this about me as well, is I was a very insecure person when it came, especially with videos and the way I looked and presented myself. So overcoming the hump was obviously putting myself out there, yeah. right? And when and a lot of people don't know this too. My first video I ever did took me, I'm not even kidding, 45 minutes to post oh, a story. I believe it. Uh, dude, I was on my phone in my car sitting there and I'm like, hey guys, oh, that looks terrible. Delete. Yeah. Oh, that looks terrible. Delete. And yeah. it took repetition and time. And, and then it got to a point where I was just like, all right, post. I didn't even look at it. And from that point forward, I told myself, I'm going to record a video no more than five times. I'm going to post after the fifth time. If I don't like it after the fifth time posting, I don't really care what happens. And, yeah. you know, it naturally, the again, my insecurities that I felt as if everybody were looking at, naturally went away over time because at some point in time you're gonna have the people who are gonna be like oh your video is stupid you're doing this you're doing that and you look at it you're like again the insecurity is away so you're like okay yeah yeah it's cool talk shit you know you're going back and forth you're you're but you got to eat it be okay be comfortable with the positivity as much as the negativity though yeah because when you confide in yourself in all the positive energy and you're not receiving that you're going to be discouraged because you're like i'm not getting positive energy but if you're getting negative negative energy and you're not feeding into it you got to be okay with both sides not feeding into both positive or negative just yeah. be okay with being yourself moving forward and being consistent because i think the key to success is discipline right mm -hmm. the more disciplined you are in doing things the more you're going to get comfortable and that's ultimately going to lead to success right um, but it's interesting. Confidence is, is honestly key in our industry, as you know, like when you're speaking to somebody, you got to have that confidence. So, well, so one thing that you did to kind of make yourself more comfortable with, you know, putting yourself out there, like on social media. Um, well, I guess I would, I think, and a lot of people can utilize this when I, before I would post a video, I would actually not even, even think about posting it. I would just record myself. I literally didn't post it. I did that for about, I think a couple of days. I just recorded myself. And then I got over time, I was like, OK, I could do it. And I would stutter 100 times and want to throw my phone across the damn room. But I, I over time, I got comfortable. And then after a certain point in time, the first day, I was like, you know what? I'm going to post it today. I don't care what happens. And then again, it took me 45 minutes and then I posted. But still, yeah. I, I broke the threshold, the little victories that you talk about. I broke that threshold and then I posted it. And over time, you'll be surprised how many people are supporting you in the background. And I find it interesting because in the situation that I'm in right now, I'm in a little bit of different playing field. Like I love and enjoy seeing other people grow and succeed. Right. Yeah. Obviously, I want my own business to grow and succeed. But I have other two people in my life right now that are are getting, you know, have the traction. They're starting to build and grow. And I love seeing it. And one of them is my, my cousin. Okay. He started again. He was the same boat. He doesn't really want to post. He was everything. Now he's posting. Right. And what I love about it is, again, people are watching. Oh, I see your videos. I love it. I do the things. And it's just seeing the recreation and breaking through these little victories that and seeing people grow. It just makes me excited and, and happy to see exactly that people's growth, you know. Yeah. And it's interesting to see is once you break out that shell, you're it's you against the world. Right. And nobody's going to stop you. And the skies are the limit on what you can achieve just from having that self-confidence. Yeah, you know? absolutely. I mean, it's, it's your perspective, you know, yeah. like you have a great perspective on it because it went from being. I don't like the way I look. I don't like the way I sound. I'm scared. What are people going to say to then all of a sudden, let me grow and I'm, it's not going to be perfect, but let me put it out there and grow. And when it comes to this social media and putting yourself out there, I mean, at the end of the day, that's our business. You know, mm -hmm. like, we, again, we don't sell the houses. We don't make them. I don't know what the house is made of. You can, God, what kind of material <laughs> is it? I don't know. It's got a roof. It's got a bathroom. <laughs> There's Plastic, a kitchen, uh, steel. Uh, there's wood, <laughs> you know, it's one of those things like, obviously you learn as you go, of course, but like, you don't have to know how to build a house to sell one. And then much less if you're going to be in the industry, but then be shy and only look to kind of have people come to you, well, then you're never going to have any real success either. You're going to do some deals, but you're not going to have big success. What, what do you want? So I kind of just told myself, you know what? I, I want success. I want to do do this right, do it big and be one of the top producing agents in, in the in the area for sure. So I need to get attention. So then I had to kind of cut the crap, get over my insecurities uh, and get people's attention because if people don't know me, how the heck are they going to do any business with me and doing those little victories? But then 
instead of just focusing on that, I'm focusing on like what you said, the growth, the development, the people that are actually supporting you and and feeling that love. And then, yeah, you see the hate, but then you're that's that's come that comes with the territory, I guess. You yeah. know, and and even that's a tough pill to swallow yeah. for sure. But I think the successful people, again, they overcome the hate and they understand that that's part okay. of growing and developing you're not gonna be everybody's cafecito cup of tea you know (laughs) you're you're gonna you're gonna have some people that don't like it you know some people don't like coffee they like tea others don't like whiskey they like tequila you know not everybody likes everything and when you understand that and you have that right perspective that's when you can really grow develop and then just continuously put genuine content out there because then that's the other thing you don't want to be something you're not you know you want to be you and people will then resonate and and connect with you on a real level versus just surface. Right. So at what point in your career did you find like, all right, I am through that threshold. I'm officially confident. At what year point did you feel like? I don't think I'm there yet. You You don't think you're there? Like, I don't see myself as a confident individual all the time. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. I didn't Yeah. So like, like I, I walk around with a journal. And I write in that thing every day and I write affirmations, st- gratitude statements, income earning statements. That's the, on, a, on the daily. And one of the things that I always write is I am confident. Like I have to remind myself to be confident, you know, because then I go back to being that shy kid in the corner with the acne that's scared to ask for that sauce. You know, yeah. like I go back <laughs> yeah. to it and I have to push myself out of it daily to then perform at a high level and show up for myself and my family. So yeah. it's something that you I you don't I don't think you ever really get over. You just, yeah. it's always kind of there, but when you know it's there and you switch the perspective, that's when you start to have those successes. Yeah. One thing is weird for me is I similarly have that, but I feel like my my insecure self is like locked in a coffin. It's like, okay, you're staying there. I'm not getting out. <laughs> you don't look at but it. <laughs> I don't. I don't. But the one time that I do get that feeling again, I don't know why, is when I put on glasses. Because okay. in high school, I had glasses. I was very, I was a cool 120 pounds. I was five feet tall. Like I was a very yeah. small, scrawny kid. So when I have glasses now, when I put them on, I'm, that that side of me comes back out. And I'm like, damn, that reminds me of when I'm in high school. <laughs> I don't like wearing glasses. I throw them out. But uh, I'm similar to that, though. I do exactly what you do. I, I like to kind of manifest my goals and, and really speak it to my mind what I want to hit. So when I first got into industry, my biggest thing, when I first, 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 I was like, I want to have one client walk in and say, I want Justin Rodriguez. And I didn't care if they were pure proof, not. I just wanted someone to walk in and say, I want to see him to buy a house. I was like, okay, perfect. So once I hit that mini goals, I moved to the next one. I'm like, okay, my first goal is I want to close $20 million worth of real estate. That was my first big goal. And I never forget my, my mentor told me, he's like, you know, people usually close about 6 million, like relax hold, hold your horses yeah, dog yeah, you gotta yeah, you yeah. gotta you gotta walk before you can run like chill <laughs> chill and i was like okay so my first year i closed 14 million or no 12 million my bad nice. and he's like so okay okay i'm a pretty nice. impressed you know this is good and then the next year again i hit my goal right and now i'm like okay 30 million now this da, da, da. and but you know you take a step back and you're like once you write these downs income goals once you write down your production goals, once you write down any goals, family related goals, your spouse goals, if you write these things down on what you got to do and circle your life around your goals and you actually see them every day, I'm a firm believer they will come to fluorescent. They will actually come up and you'll be able to attain them because you see them. I, I'm a firm believer is if you see your goals, they also become and feel as if they're obtainable. When you just kind of like, going along with life and whatever happens, happens, you almost feel like lost. You're like, what am I doing next? I don't know what to do next. And you kind of go into the cycle of life. Yeah. And I, I I feel bad for those who are in the lifestyle where they're in that cycle of life. Nine to five, go home, eat dinner, go to sleep, wake up with no goals. Because then that creates where you're like, what's my purpose? And yeah. you don't have that that sense of urgency, that sense of purpose. So I think it's super important for every individual, every single person to write down your goals. What do you want to accomplish, whether it be physically, mentally, in any aspect? Because at that point in time, you give yourself purpose every day to wake up and say, these are the goals I'm going to obtain. Once I obtain them, now you go to the next one. And that's not stopping at one goal. It's kind of going on to the next and next. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, great point. I, and thanks for sharing, because that I think that's something that a lot of people really miss. You know, a lot of people, they wish that something will good would happen. Yeah. I wish I could get into real estate. One day I wish I could buy a house. One day I will get that car. 
and it's just a wish. But then if you don't sit there and actually write it down and actually go through that, there's something about putting pen to paper, you know, or in nowadays, uh, type it on your notes yeah. or yeah. chat GPT it, whatever, you know, <laughs> like do something where it's out there and then it's in front of you. And I like to write them down pretty often, like if not daily, at least once a week, I sit down and just write the goals. And like you said, you you start to manifest these these things to ha actually happen for you in real life and you start to then see like damn i'm the creator i could do this it's it's not impossible and again little victories little wins lead up to bigger wins because you you know that you got that first client walking in asking for you then you hit that milestone and, and volume and now you're trying to achieve it and multiply because you know you've done it because you proved it to yourself that it can be done so if you could do that what what else can you do? You know, and I I've, I have a uh, similar uh, experiences where you know at first I just wanted to get my license, get my license. Oh, got it. Okay, get my first deal. Okay, cool, got it. Um, let me get that 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 uh black on black Range Rover. <laughs> yeah. That was like on oh, it forever. Yeah. I finally got it. Then I got another one. So I was like, yes. Yeah. Um, let me get that beautiful girl. I need a partner. Took a while, but I got it. <laughs> she follow she, she follow is the follow up. She played hard to get. So, so that was the best closing I ever had. Right. So, so that I, I manifested that I, I want to take a trip. I want a badass wedding. I manifested it, you know, little victories like that, that prove to yourself, damn, if I could do this, I could do that. And then you start to then stretch yourself to achieve bigger and better things. And then you, you, you start to then realize if you could see it here in your mind and you have the courage enough to put it out there, speak it, write it down and look at it and work after it. That's the other thing, the execution part. And I think that's where kudos to you again, because you actually say it, think it, say it and then execute. And I think that's where a lot of people, they miss out. They, they have 101 excuses why they don't do it. And then they complain about not having it. When you actually go in there and do the work, you can achieve it. And there's no reason why anybody should really hate on you or why you should be caught up on the hate because you put in the work. You deserve it. And nobody can take that from you. Right. So. Right. Well, for one last question before we end it off, I think everyone wants to know, what is your five year plan for you and your company? So five year plan, we're looking to really just six. Uh, grow and expand. So right now, NF Properties, based out of Oak Brook, we're a small team, but we're killing it. We're trying to do over 150 deals this year. So I would say in the f next five years, we want to hit, we want to get to a billion dollar brokerage or close to nice, it. Dude. You That's know? awesome. So I think uh, awesome. I'm done playing it small. Let's, let's, let's win, win big and have as many amazing people join me along the way. Awesome, man. Awesome. Well, first off, Mr. Fragoso, I want to say thank, thank you so much for coming out, man. Thank you, uh, and everybody, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, if you guys need anything at all, we'd love to help you in any way we can. Like, subscribe, comment, and you already know, we got our cabecito on deck. Thank you, guys. Take care.